lecture to you. I'm not going to use a microphone, but I'm going to engage you. Of you people that are here today, why did you come here? Did you come to waste your time, listen to people talk to you, or did you have an objective? Networking. How many of you are employed? Raise your hand. A minority. How many of you are actually trades people from another country who have a certificate of qualification? Why aren't you working? <laughs> it's very easy. It's because you haven't taken the initiative to find out what is necessary to take that extra step. There's a terrible skilled work shortage in this country. Over a million workers are needed across Canada. These are statistics from Statistics Canada. So what you really need is that assistance to take the next step. How many of you have actually got a license in Ontario for the trade that you were licensed overseas? Well, if you have that, the only thing you're lacking is that experience, that opportunity that you haven't been given. And the way to get that experience is either guerrilla marketing, you've got to market yourself. You've got to go forward to the employers and say why you should be employed. To do that, you've got to stop being the employee and be the employer. Why would you hire you? That's the way you should be looking at it. Why would you hire you? You better be good, but it's because you bring a result to the business. What is the purpose of business? And if you don't answer me, I'm going to leave the stage. In other words, I want people to engage me. What is the purpose of profit? Well, Harvard University says that's it. The purpose of business is to maximize profits or minimize losses. Because businesses also do make losses. And in these cases, the only way you can do it is to be the best that you can be. And to bring a benefit. Unfortunately, too many people, and remember, I'm an employer. I've been an employer in, a large, in large corporations. What are we looking for? We want to maximize our profit. To an extent, employers definitely exploit people. They have to, because the objective is to make a profit. And the objective of the employer, employee is to make sure they do well and that they get remunerated for the effort that they put in. It's a give and take on both sides. So the first thing you need to be is passionate about the job you're going to do. And therefore, if amongst you, you have your certificate of qualification from overseas, and you haven't taken the next step to get it authenticated and certified in Ontario, that's your next step. If you've already done that one, it's a case of finding out what your employer needs and make sure you can deliver that. Now the big advantage of being in the skilled trades is there is no shortage of work. There's a shortage of communi good communication. There's a shortage of the ability to demonstrate the skills you've got. But I don't know any employer who will not hire a good worker if they have a need. And they all at the moment have needs. So you've got to look at it that way first. The biggest problem, the biggest problem with getting a job is you've taken the attitude you're entitled to something. As opposed to saying, what can I give and then get remunerated for? You don't give it away, but you also find a sure way that you can convince the employer that with your services, you are going to do well. Now let's assume for a second, because now I'm coming to the topic I'm here for, entrepreneurship. Let's assume for a moment that you don't get the respect from the employer. And you're good at what you do. You should be taking his business away from him. 
In other words, you should be able to deliver to his customer or to the customer. There are lots of customers because that's what you're really doing. You should be able to deliver those services and therefore do it directly. Market yourself. Go forward and say, in your, within your own community. And I'm sure everyone here is an entrepreneur without realizing they're doing it. I'm certain that if somebody in your own community or a friend or in your church group or whatever it is needs some help and you have the skill set to do it, there, I heard there were electricians here. I'm sure if somebody in your own environment said, could you wire up a light for me? You'll wire it up. And you might get a thank you. That's remuneration. You might get paid for it. That's remuneration. You might get a referral. In other words, it's the value or the type of remuneration you get. We all have to support our family. But you're not supporting your family sitting back and waiting for somebody to open up a door for you. You've got to do it yourself. And that's what entrepreneurship is. And then to become an entrepreneur, and you've got the skill set already, it's just a matter of saying, okay, a new business will be formed. Because whether you work just in your community, one person, once a week, you're doing a little job, or you go out there and start selling your services. That's what an entrepreneur does. Having said that, it doesn't mean to say that it's easy, because it takes a lot of skill set to sell yourself, to open a business. The thing you should be doing and remembering, if you don't turn those, uh, <laughs> or anybody, turn off your cell phone, because I hate competition. Okay? Use a mic. I don't need a mic. I can't stand still behind the, the microphone. I'm very animated, I'm very passionate about what I do. That word passion, it came in earlier as well. You must be passionate about the work you want to do. And you must be willing to break down doors to get the results you want. But you've got to actually know where you want to go. And that's the biggest problem in entrepreneurship. You think it would be very nice to have a business, have the money rolling in, going out, having a nice car, the Mercedes that was talked about. It's a lot of work. And you've got to be willing to put that effort into it. And if you put the effort in, you will always get the reward. Because it's, you've got to do it smartly. But I'll give you the example of what I'm trying to lead up to. If you're going to open a business, you've got to remember that it's not just being the tradesperson, the skill set, the <coughs> uh, uh, electrician, if you're going to open an electrical business. It's to be a businessman. You've got to know finance. You've got to know marketing. You've got to know the skills of how to deal with bankers, how to deal with customers. And go through from the beginning, designing the job, to the end, delivering the product that you are actually selling. And that's what you need to be an entrepreneur. And that's why there's so few people who are successful in entrepreneurship, because they think, oh well, I can be an electrician, I can be a hairdresser, I can be a whatever it's going to be. Now you open your business, and you are the best hairdresser in the, in the world. But you've forgotten, you've also got to know how to run a business. You've got to know how to do the banking. You've got to know how to finance it. And that is education. And that is what you all have to do in the end. Is you're in a lifelong learning experience. That's the only way you can succeed as an entrepreneur. But the, the one thing I, I, I get so frustrated with, with when I talk to and it's both people, is that they complain that they don't get opportunities, etc. The problem is they don't take the opportunities because they don't communicate what they want to do. They think that they should be given something. You've got to go out there and take it. You've got to fight for it. You've got, as I mentioned earlier, the one big advantage, everyone in here who is a, a journeyman, who is a tradesperson, you're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of everybody. Because you've got the skill set already. You can't have got there 
without having the ability to learn. Mm -hmm.